Hello friends, welcome to Online Web Tutor. I am Sanjay. In this video, we will discuss one more interesting topic of code in Itavo and that is how to use figure library in data seeding. Already we have discussed all about the concept of seeders class and how to use it inside application inside last video. So this is all about the extended version of seeders class. If I back to editor, so seeders class are basically those classes inside CodeIgniter 4 by the help of that we can generate some fake data. Inside last video, we had seen by putting some static data inside our seeders class method. But this time, we'll use faker library. So what is faker library and why we use inside application? So faker is a library, it means PHP based library. By the help of composer command, we can install that. But inside CodeIgniter 4, we don't need to actually execute any Composer command because Faker is an inbuilt library inside CodeIgniter 4. But if we are talking about the older versions of CodeIgniter inside legacy versions, we need to install using Composer. But this time, only we need to load all about our Faker library and we can use easily all about their methods and properties. If I go inside App folder, database seeds so this is the class file what we had created inside last video so once we create any seeder class file it will go and store inside the seeds folder by default this is the skeleton the seeders class file provides a run method inside run method all we have the logic to insert fake data into our database as we can see that inside last video, we had done a set of static data and by using query builder methods, we had inserted that. But just consider a scenario, if we have a project and we want a huge number of data. So to create a huge number of data in a static way, it is too much time taking. But now, we'll use a faker library to generate huge number of fake data within seconds. So to understand the basic concept of figure library into our seeders class, I will go and remove that file first and we will learn from scratch. So successfully, now I have deleted. If I go inside database, this is the table called students and inside last video, these are the data what we had inserted. Now this time, we will do the same insertion process but this time we will use faker library. We will generate a random name value, designation, email and phone number. Because id is an auto-incremented column, it means it will generate automatically and created at automatically picks the server current timestamp value. So first, I will create a seeder class file for this application, back to terminal. If I type php spark, press enter, it will provide the command list of spark CLI. Go inside generator section, here we can see here we have a command called make seeder. Look at its single line description that it generates a new seeder file. So let's create that php spark make seeder and after that we need to pass our seeder class name. So let's say that we want to generate fake data for a student's table. So the class name will be student and I will pass suffix as a flag. It means it will create studentseeder.php. If I press enter, now we can see that studentseeder.php file has been created inside seeds folder. Back to editor, go inside seeds folder and here is the file. Now this time, we don't have any code inside our run method. Now we will use the concept of figure library, its methods and properties to see that how to generate a huge number of data for a student's table. So first thing first, let's delete all the rows of this table. So here we have four different rows. Check all, click on delete, yes and now delete it. Back to editor. Now go inside run method. So here, let's load our faker library. So use faker. We can see here, backward slash and I will use factory. Go inside our cedar class. Let's say public 
function and I will create our own private method. It will be private, private function generate fake student. And here inside this private method, first thing first, I will create the object of our factory. So what I will do inside this private method, let's say faker object equals to factory and we will call create method. It will return an instance and by the help of this instance, it means object, we can call its properties and methods. So here, return I will return an array and inside this array we'll have all the values that we need to insert or create a new student inside our students table. So to create a student we want the data for name, designation, email and phone. Back to editor name email designation and phone. Now next inside each column we want a random and a fake value. So here for this name value let's say fake or object if I put arrow operator so we can see if I type name it has provided a method as well as a property. So once we use any like name and property it will return a random and a fake value. So let's say that I will use this property for name value for email. Let's say figure object. Again, if I type email, we can see it has provided a method as well as a property. So I will use property for designation. Let's say that will define a set of values and from that we will assign a random value to each student. So here, let's say position equals to and inside this array let's say that the designation will be SEO web developer web designer framework developer full stack so these are the designation what we have set inside this position array now go here inside this designation and I will use figure object and we will call random element. Random element is a method. Inside this method look at IntelliSense we need to pass an array and it will return a dynamic random value. So here we will have position and each time it will return or each random value from the set of data. Now next for this phone number if I type faker object and let's type phone so we can see that it has provided the option of phone number as a method and phone number as a property. So I will select property here. Now this time as we can see that once we call this private method it will return an array of data and inside this array we will have the name value, email value, designation and phone value. So let's go inside this run method. So here I will use for loop index is from 1 means 0 index up to let's say 100. It means that this loop will iterate from 0 index up to 99. And here let's say plus plus means each time loop will be incremented. Now go inside here inside this for loop. Next I will call all about generate fake student method. So I will copy, put it here. If I say data or instead of calling data, let's say student and I will call using this operator. So once we call this private method, it will return a set of fake data and the fake data will be stored inside this variable. Now inside this loop, what I will do this db table it means we'll use the query builder approach to insert our data into our table and the table name will be students and here inside the second value not second value we'll use insert method look at intellisense we need to pass our set of data 
and the data will be inside our student variable. All we have done with our logic and the concept. Let's go back to terminal. So once we execute this student seeder class, it will generate 100 number of fake data to our students table. Let's say in action, back to terminal. So PHP Spark, press enter. If we go inside our database section, here we have a command called dbseed. So once we use this command, then after using this command, we need to pass our seeder class file as the parameter value. So here, let's say that PHP Spark, dbseed, and the class name, what we have for our student seeder, is will be studentseeder.php. So the class name is student seeder. Back to terminal. Press enter. Wait for a while because it is inserting hundred number of rows inside our table. So data seeded successfully. If I back to browser, go inside our database table, click on browse. Now as we can see that inside our students table, now we have hundred number of total rows. Inside each row, you can see we have a name value, designation, email and a phone number. So this is some kind of fake data insertion in a huge amount. Also we can see that inside designation, all the positions what we had statically defined random is picked for each student data. So successfully, by the help of this video, now we understood the concept of figure library and the data seeding process inside CodeIgniter 4. So if we go inside this private method, we can see that here we have used the properties as name, email, random element and phone number. These are the methods and properties provided by our figure library. So to get the list of all the properties and methods available inside our figure library, if I go inside browser and type figure PHP library, here we have a GitHub repository link. Let's open that into a new tab. If you go inside this documentation of this GitHub repository, you will find all about the available methods and properties. For example, here we have used random element. I will copy the method name, go here and if I search here, we can see that random element. So we can get the idea about the syntax and the uses of any method and property of figure library. So once you use this random element, as we can see, we need to pass an array of data and inside this array, automatically each time whenever we call, it will return the random value from those set of data. So here, if we go inside its documentation, we'll see the name value. Let's go at the top of this documentation. So here we can see person address. So if I click on this person link, we can see that here we have the properties available by the help of that we can generate some random value if we use last name it will return something value like that it means random value it's a fake value title male title female here we can see here we have a name method so we can find lots of methods properties while using our figure library concept so as we can see here we have email what we used inside our concept of generation of fake data here it is and this property is actually coming from at this syntax so finally the purpose of this video now completed and the purpose was that how to use a figure library with our cedars class concept now you can use the same concept to generate the huge number of data for your different different tables with different different values so for this video session guys thank you for watching and have a great day.